What's up YouTube, Jake Travelani here, and today I'm going to be installing Hive OS on my P104 mining rig. So when we're using a USB drive, so I'm gonna take the M.2 off of my P104 rig, and I'll be using this SanDisk USB drive. It's a 32 gigabyte drive. Uh, you can get away with a 16 gig, because I have an actual 16 gigabyte one running Hive OS on my P106 rig. But I got a 32 gigabyte one from Best Buy for about $8, not too big a deal. Or if you, you can get even cheaper, this one is actually a 64 gig. Uh, this was $5.50 at Micro Center. If you live close to a Micro Center, these will work just fine. Uh, they're pretty cheap and still pretty decent USB drives. But the 64 gig one, I'm gonna save for a different rig. So I'm gonna put that one aside. I'm gonna use this 32 gigabyte one. So we're gonna go inside the computer. I'm gonna show you how I flash the drive using Rufus. And then I'm gonna put it in there and I'm gonna show you the software while it's running. So you'll see two rigs running, my P106 and my P104, but we're gonna be putting this on my P104 rig today. Uh, you might also need to mod your BIOS a little bit. Uh, not, not necessarily mod it, but program your BIOS to boot from USB, but if there's no other drive connected, it should automatically boot from it. So let's get inside the computer and i'll show you how i flash this and then we'll put it on there and i'll boot it up and i'll show you the rig running on that and how i get it to mine when i want it to mine all right so here we are inside the pc now so i'm going to open up rufus i already have this stuff downloaded from the website but if you needed to download it you just go to hiveos.farm to download it uh, so you would come in you go to hiveos.farm and I can just sign in, but you can go down here. You can find it right on this website where you would just download the actual like software. And you need to click install. You be GPU miner. If you're ASIC mining, you can do this. And you just, I downloaded a zip file. I didn't do torrent, so I downloaded the zip file. They have a flash utility, but I didn't use that. Uh, they have a little how to write image here. So if you click that, it tells you how to do it. So I downloaded the zip file here, and then. When I sign in, it goes into my actual Hive OS account. So I tried using the other softwares that they recommend, but they didn't work for me. So I just use Rufus. So when I go on the Rufus, there's a 64 gig. That's not what I want to use. So I'm gonna plug in. I'm gonna plug in my Sandish drive that I showed you in the beginning of the video, and we're gonna flash it to that. So no label 32 gigabyte, that's what I'm using. The flash image, let's go in here, that's fine. We're gonna click select. And this is my hive, it's in my documents. I already extracted it, so that's here. So we'll use this one. We'll hit open and it's ready. And then we'll just click start and let it do its thing. So just hit okay. This is pretty much just saying all data is gonna be lost. So we click okay, now it's gonna Sit there, delete the partitions, and it's going to start flashing the image to our USB. So once this is done, then we'll have to go in and configure it to work on the actual USB. All right, so now that Rufus is done, we just click close. So this, now I will go in here, and now there's Hive. So you will need Notepad++. And we're going to modify this. So you're going to open it in Notepad++. So what I'm going to do is add my farm hash here. And then we're going to do a save as. And this is where I made a mistake before. So when you go to save as, you want it to be rig.conf. So I didn't take this dash out. And I just left it and it didn't work. So you want rig-conf, all file types. You don't want anything else with it. So we're gonna save it. So I'm gonna put my farm hash here in off camera because I don't need people knowing that, but I'll show you where to get it. So that's, all right. So to get your farm hash, you're gonna click settings. It's kind of just gonna be in the middle right here. You'll see farm hash. So you're just gonna get that and you're gonna copy it and you're gonna paste it right here so that when you boot the system up, then it'll automatically recognize and you'll see it in your workers here. So you have up to three workers here for free. 
once you hit that fourth one, it's going to start charging you three dollars per rig, which, in a large scheme of things, isn't really that bad. But so I'm going to set that up right now. All right, now you see I saved my uh, config file here. I'm going to remove the USB from my computer. I'm going to put it on the mining rig, and then we're going to boot it up. And we're gonna wait for it to show up here in my my farm in my J Travelini farm. So let me remove it, put it in the rig, and we'll we'll get it loaded in. All right, so we booted up. Now you can see two workers going on one farm. So we can go in here, and uh, I'll rename this rig. So if we go, we click on it. I can go into settings and rename it. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so now it's renamed. It's P104100. See, it's missing a flight sheet. So what I'll do is I can click on it. You see this, but first, before I do it, I'm gonna go into my overclock settings, and I'm gonna set it. I like to do 70 fan on all eight. You can see the GPU thing flickered there. So I think I'm one over. So that's all eight. Quarter clock, I was 100. And I'm pulling these right off my Windows Miner. In memory, I was 400. So GPU seven is actually GPU eight because if you go over here, it's GPU zero. Uh, power limit, I'll set. I was at about 110. So I'm gonna set 105 per card. And I'm gonna save that. So it's gonna save my overclocks here. So here's my overclocks. But now we need to add a flight sheet. You can see it here, uh, updating my cards and my configuration. So now we need to add a flight sheet. So I do have a few already made. So we're gonna go into flight sheet and I, they're all set to Ethereum. So I'm gonna put it on actually uh, Phoenix Miner. So I'm just gonna click the little flight guy, click apply. And now it's gonna save that to my configuration too also and then get it start mining on some Ethereum. Next miner now, I'm actually getting 33 mega hash a second on these overclocks, which is actually slightly higher than what I was getting when I was on Windows. And this would actually dip down a lot. Uh, so I can actually go in and check Ethermine because that's the pool that I'm on and it'll show this. But in fact, I'm getting 33 mega hash a second at the same overclocks. And this is actually about the same wattage that i was getting it might be a little bit lower i'm wondering if i can set this to 100 and get a little bit lower per card it might you know five watts doesn't sound like a lot but any experienced miner out there maybe watch or even any new miner that might be watching if i can get these five watts per card lower that's that saves me a good amount over time so i might try and do that the temps are still pretty low but it's only just started mining so i might want to wait a little bit to see if they can let's try and refresh here so yeah 53 so that's probably more more accurate 56 but 33 mega hash a second that's pretty good for for the overclocks that i'm using uh i know these do have heinic believe heinix memory so that kind of hurts my overclocks just a tiny bit uh if it was samsung i'd be able to push them a lot more but i may try and push it like to 500 and see what happens so i might try and do that a little bit later in another video but right now, 33 mega hash a second, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, mining Ethereum. But if we do go to my mining pool, I do have the two. One of these, I'll probably switch to Ethereum Classic. So I might switch this P106 rig to Ethereum Classic eventually. Uh, probably do that. I just gotta upload my wallets to it. And then get this mining, but 23 mega hash a second across the board on these is pretty good. But you see, these do have Samsung memory, so you see my urban clocks are a little bit more. A 75 watts per card, I mean, that's pretty good. So, we'll go back to my farm here. So, my P104 rig, we got it up and running. You can click here, as you saw, and do the overclocks. You can also do it per card here. If you do mixing match your GPUs, mine aren't, they're all EVGA. Uh, P106, P104, 100s. So I kind of said I will have them on the same overclock. 
but you can do it per card if they're different cards. You, as you can see, these are the ones that are overclocked to eight gigabytes of memory, as opposed to four, which they come out of the box at. But I'm pretty happy with these cards. I'm pretty happy with where they're sitting right now. Let's give one more refresh, see where we're sitting at with temps. But 55, 59, see I'm still sitting under 60. And right now in this room, it is sitting 86 degrees Fahrenheit. But even looking at the rig, uh, you can look at it right now and you can see we got the USB drive down there and it's sitting at a solid pretty much 1,040 watts at the wall. Not too bad for what we're doing. Uh, so let's get in here and let's actually check out what to mine and we'll put that, we'll put the 1040 in and we'll put, we got 269 mega hash a second. So we have eight 1070s essentially. Uh, we got the 269 mega hash, 1040, yep. So 200 and like, we'll just say 265 mega hash a second. We'll calculate it. So technically, since I'm on Ethereum, it'd be $7.88 a day. Technically, I should be switching to Ethereum Classic at $8.50 a day profit. This is a little, uh, you know, conservative. I don't pay 15 cents per kilowatt hour. But I put it at that just to be conservative during my um, calculations here because I want to make sure I have a little bit of wiggle room in case, you know, one day I forget to switch my electric provider and I do end up spending 15, 16 cents per kilowatt hour just for a month or, you know, just in case it fluctuates a little bit. So my mining like calculations along the wattage things a little bit off, but it was pretty rock solid on the watts at the wall. I watched it for a few sec, for like 10 seconds. So it wasn't bouncing around, but I mean, it's up and running. It's on Hive OS now under my J Travelini farm. And it's running pretty solid right now. I'm pretty happy with it. I really like this software and how easy it is to overclock and monitor the wattage and everything. And they have the phone app to monitor it also. Uh, I'll tweak with the overclocks a little bit and see if I can get this up a little bit higher and possibly keep the same wattage. But I'll do that in a later video because it does take time to settle in and update through the website but so far i'm pretty happy with it and that's pretty much how you get hive os installed and uh, working on your rigs all right thanks for checking this video out i hope it shows some people how to install hive os on their uh, mining rigs uh, it's definitely a nice operating system i really like i really enjoy it. it's very easy to overclock your you know graphics cards using their their software uh, make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button ring that bell icon, check out future videos on different mining rigs or different tweaks I do to my mining rigs that I have currently or overclocks that I might change along the way. Uh, also check out the budget PC builds that I build or the higher end ones when I build them. I'll post videos of it. But thanks for checking out. See you next time.